Hi, I um, wanted to show off an example here of using the Beagle Bone Black um, single board computer to control a servo motor. So, unlike a standard um, hobby RC, a hobby uh, servo motor, uh, this motor here, which is from uh, Ed Bennett um, at my hacker space here in Chicago, Pumping Station 1, uh, is a uh, DC motor here and then it also has a rotary encoder on it as well uh, or I should say quadrature encoder um, so there's actually uh, six pins on it um, two are for the power for the motor and then for the encoder unit it has um, four more as well so uh, we have power for the encoder which is five volts and then we have an A and B channel for the quadrature encoder um, unit that's inside of the motor here. Um, so what that's going to do is the motor turns, the uh, motor encoder is going to output um, quadrature encoded pulses on the A and B channel here. Um, and then on the Beagle Bone, one of the nice features of the Beagle Bone, uh, because it has the main processor, the main 1 gigahertz processor, is the TI uh, Citara chip. And that has a built-in hardware block uh, for um, decoding the quadrature encoded pulses. So that's called the TI EQU, sorry, EQEP module or uh, EQEP module, which stands for Enhanced Quadrature Encoded Pulse Decoder Module. So that will allow us to very easily get the position of the motor uh, through the um, encoder signals without having to constantly pull them um, from a program. Uh, there's a kernel module written by Nathaniel Lewis that will take care of all that for us. So here we, I'm logged into the BeagleBone here. Um, I know the screen is not that great, um, but I'll have the text um, available in a uh, GitHub gist or something that I'll link to from the video. Um, so basically right here what we've, what we've got is um, before I loaded the uh, um, TI equip uh, device tree settings, um, we just had the normal HDMI and EMMC. Um, and then this uh, equip2 alt device tree file I got from the mailing list. Um, I'll post a link in there, the BeagleBoard mailing list. Uh, it just basically describes the pins that are going to be used by the equip module, uh, which is that encoded quadrature. Uh, pulse decoder um, hardware block uh, and then once we load it we see here we now have uh, it loaded in here the equip 2 alt um, and what that stands for is the encoded quadrature uh, or the enhanced quadrature encoded pulse decoder and then there's three of them uh, so we're using the second one and we're using the alternate pins for it um, because the normal pins conflict I believe with HDMI um, so if we look at D message here real quick. Okay, so we can see here that uh, the Cape Manager uh, was able to load our uh, device tree overlay, which um, set the pins correctly and loaded the um, driver. So now we can see here that we are um, looking at the uh, SysFS entries that the um, TI equip kernel module that Nathaniel Lewis wrote um, expose to user space. Um, so the way we get to this directory is we just CD into it. Um, I have an asterisk here because um, sometimes that number will be different. Uh, so that's an easy way to get around that. Um, and then this basically says uh, where you, this is the equip uh, number two um, based on the offset there um, and then if we move into this directory and list it we can see that uh, there is these different files here one of the ones that we're interested in is position um, if I can't position right now it shows uh, zero uh, so once I start the motor uh, that will start incrementing as it starts getting the quadrature encoded pulses um, coming in to um, the two pins. So each of these um, equip blocks uh, has a separate A and B input um, 
which uh, we have hooked up to the beagle bone on those pins. Uh, real quick here, I just wanted to show um, where the pins come from that we have the um, uh, channel A and B of the encoder hooked up to. Uh, so in lib slash firmware slash bone underscore equip to alt.dts, this is the device tree overlay for the module. And if we look at this, we'll be able to see here that um, for the equip 2, um, remember there's 0, 1, and 2, uh, for the A and B, we're using um, the P8 header and the beagle bone pins 11 and 12. So that's what we're going to have the um, two um, signals from the encoder coming out of the motor going into. So we have six pins on the motor here, two of which are the quadrature encoder um, uh, A and B channels. And we have those hooked up to the beagle bone uh, through just a resistor divider because the motor's running at 5 volts. We want to make sure we keep, I, I think these are just identical resistors, so it's going to give at most 2.5 volts, which I think should be fine for the high um, over here. And then as we're looking at the device tree overlay config, it's um, pins 11 and 13 here that we have the channel A and B hooked up to. So this is going into the pins for uh, the EQEP uh, 2 module uh, per our device tree overlay configuration. So now if I cap position it's going to show zero and if I start the motor it is then going to start increasing as it gets quadrature encoded pulses from the encoder on the motor. So I just connected power. Um, it's connect. It's running at, I believe, 4.5 volts right now from my power supply. Um, and we can see here the motor is spinning. Uh, so the motor is actually hooked up to a gearbox. Um, and you can see here how there's a. It's actually rotating at a higher speed, and then it's geared down. And this is actually a uh, coupling the Ed um, Bet machine at the hacker space. Uh, so we can see here it's running, and then it's been running for a little bit here. Let's take a look at our count. So we can see her position is now at uh, 22,000 ish, and that's negative because according to the way I hooked it up, it, it is going backwards. Um, which in this configuration is somewhat arbitrary. If I uh, flip the positive and negative on the motor, it would then be going forward. Um, the forward and reverse is determined based on um, basically which A and B channel I have hooked up. So um, in, a, in, the, in an actual project that would matter, in this case it doesn't really matter. We're just interested to see that um, the counter is um, increasing. So we can see here that uh, the pulses are going by at a pretty fast clip there. Like about between a second, there's over a thousand pulses that go by. Um, and there is actually ways uh, to get the uh, velocity. Um, there's a lot of configuration that you can do here with the um, EQEP uh, module um, to figure out the, the timings of when the pulses are occurring and, and that sort of thing. So this is just a uh, one-line little shell script here to just keep on um, outputting position every 200 milliseconds. If I go and hit enter, we should see the count here. So we can see that it uh, it goes along in a pretty good clip there. And this is because uh, given the way I have the signals hooked up, it is believes it is going backwards. If I were to flip in the A and B channel, then it would be going in reverse. So I just flip the um, channels here by uh, flipping the um, A and B channel, the, which pins it's hooked up to. Um, so essentially, that makes the it's, it was currently the, it thought it was going in reverse. Now it's going to be going forward, which means that. Uh, we had a high, we have a large negative number now that negative number is decreasing 
as it is going forward from the perspective of the uh, equip block. Uh, if, another thing I can do actually is I can actually um, reset position. So in addition to reading put from position, we can also uh, write to it a zero if we want to set it to back to zero. So I uh, echo. I can echo zero to position, and then it will reset it to zero and then we can see here now that the equip thinks we're counting um, we're going forward it's counting up um, because I flipped the A and B without flipping the way that the motor is rotating uh, it's now going to be counting up so if I go back and run our loop again we're gonna see it's going to be counting up so this is the number of positions it's going through every 200 milliseconds, which looks to be somewhere around 100, a um, little under 100 maybe. So we're at 100 positions every 200 milliseconds. Um, and I can actually change the speed of this by changing the voltage that I'm sending to the motor. Um, ultimately, for the actual um, servo solution, uh, we will actually have the BeagleBoom running a PID loop, which will a closed loop um, control uh, system, uh, probably in Python, that will uh, change will PWM the motor speed. Um, we'll set the motor speed via PWM pin, um, so we'll actually have control. Um, right now, we're we're only seeing how fast the motor is going, and I'm controlling the speed of the motor based on the voltage that my power supply is set at, which is hooked up to the motor. So I have uh, bumped it up from 3 volts to 4.5 volts, so the motor is moving faster now. Um, let's take a look at how fast that's updating on the display now. So every 200 milliseconds we're updating, we're grabbing the count and displaying it, uh, so it is moving by at a uh, faster pace there, I believe. So, uh, one last thing here. Uh, Nathaniel Lewis, who wrote the um, or he goes by also Technoman 117. Uh, he also wrote APIs for Python and C++ um, that can that use the kernel module that he wrote. Um, so you can find that uh, on GitHub at Technoman 1117. I'll also link it to from this video. Uh, but just wanted to show here uh, one of the test trust the Python programs that uses his uh, Equip uh, module. Uh, so, very basic program, it just um, basically does what we were similarly doing from the shell, um, which is from within the Python module, goes through and uh, basically uh, prints the current position. Uh, very similar to what we were doing by catting the position file. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run it here. Uh, one thing to note is it's actually using mode absolute when we get into actually figuring out when we want to have the velocity of the motor um, or the speed of the motor, we're going to change that to mode relative so we can have uh, we can know the number of positions over a certain amount of time, but for right now we're just looking at mode absolute. So here we see and we can see it going along here. This is with the motor running at 4.5 volts so it's moving uh, pretty quickly so we can see that the Python program is just uh, outputting that uh, count um, from the position file. All right, so um, hopefully that wasn't uh, too long. Just kind of wanted to give an overview of how the um, uh, enhanced quadrature encoded pulse. Um, decoder unit on the beagle bone can be used uh, with the driver that Nathaniel Lewis wrote um, to kind of create your own servo motor uh, with just a DC motor um, and a um, 
encoder, a quadrature encoder. Uh, so uh, next up I'll go into how we've been trying to set up a PID loop to actually control the speed of the servo motor.